Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Brandon Smith from Grid Metals Corp. Guys, I find Grid Metals Corp interesting because they're one of the few companies that I see that's out there in Canada that is trying to actually get to lithium concentrate production. I think that that's an interesting story because you don't have to get all the way to carbonate or hydroxide, which is used in cars. All you really need to do is get it to a five and a half percent value, which just requires some concentration of the lithium. And then you can sell that to a user who can refine it further. We've seen this model work with various Australian companies. Now, if you look at the company's investor deck, they point to some comparables like Core Lithium, Siona Mining, and Sigma Lithium, who have taken similar approaches, and they've seen 25 to 35x appreciations in their market capitalization. So from my view, the stock price is down a little bit as a function of lithium being down over 80% in 2023. But in the end, we are going to need a lot more lithium in order to fuel an electric vehicle revolution. And we're going to have to see the price come up in order for companies to go through the trouble of producing lithium for the domestic supply chains. So guys, I think that this is a very interesting lithium story. If you're looking for a company that's trying to do more than simply put drills in the ground and grab some, some channel samples, I think that this is a story that should they be successful in what they're trying to accomplish, could be one of those great stories in the Canadian junior markets in 2024 and 2025. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. So it's the first time we've had you on or anyone from Grid Metals Corp. Could you give us a brief introduction of the company, what the what the goal is and uh, sort of what's happening right now? Yeah, for sure. So Grid Metals Corp, we are a, a junior lithium development company. We have an asset in Southeast Manitoba. It's two hours from Winnipeg. It's called Donner Lake. And our goal is to be in production as fast as we can. So we have a mining operation at Donner and a brownfield processing facility, which was an old gold mill, which we're going to reconfigure. And combining that together, we hope to have a mining operation that is in production by 2025. So we would be one of the next uh, producing lithium operations in Canada. So th this is similar to some of the other names that we've seen who have done this. Uh, Siona is a popular name. I remember going and visiting their booth at PDAC in like, 2018 and nobody was really paying attention to the story despite the fact that we knew that there was going to be tremendous amounts of lithium and nobody really cared and uh they managed to actually get there and it looks like you guys are are are, are essentially following a similar model which is as i understand it to take lithium from the ground and get it up to a five six percent concentrate and then send that to a processor is that accurate yeah correct so our our mining operation donner is 75 kilometers from the uh, True North Gold Mill, which we're going to reconfigure. We've done a, a scoping study on that, and we hope to have a PA out by the end of this quarter that wraps economics around our, our full mining operation. We put out a maiden resource last July, 7 million tons at 1.4%, so very high grade and open at depth, so we think it gets bigger, and we're going we're gonna to do some drilling in the next few weeks as well. That's 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 not a bad property in the lithium world world uh, to be north of one percent with millions of tons. Yeah, yeah, no, the grade is it's you know one of the higher grade projects in Canada, and it's very open at depth, and we think we can get it bigger as well. So the the processing facility that you guys are putting together, how many tons a day can it process, or how many uh, tons? per day or per year of lithium concentrate are you guys shooting for? Yeah, so it's uh, it can take around a half million ton per annum of uh, lithium ore, and that will give you around 75,000 tons of spodumene concentrate at 5.5%. So that's kind of the benchmark now, a 5.5% concentrate, and, and that's what we're hoping to do. So, you know, these lithium prices, lithium obviously, as you probably know, the spot price in China keeps falling, but you know, we do think this turns around at some point. Um, you know, the 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 macro for lithium, we, we really believe in the supply demand, and we will need more production out of North America to actually have a localized supply chain like the uh, you know the governments want. So the price of lithium concentrate right now, there's not. It just just so I understand, there's not really a spot market for uh, for for lithium concentrate, is there? It's it, it would have to be more of a you're going to sign a an offtake agreement with somebody who's going to process it into 
uh, say a lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide? Yeah. So the spot market, there is a small spot market in China. So you can reference, you can see prices that are referenced to a China spot market, but you, you, like, you, like you're saying a lot, most of the volume for lithium and spodumene goes through contracts and through offtakes. So that spot market, which everyone looks at for pricing is a fraction of the market. So, it, it, you know, in, in my opinion, it's not truly representative of, of the entire market and where contracts are settling at. So uh, you guys are are structuring the facility as a joint venture. Is that accurate? Uh, where you guys are doing some some profit sharing? So our Donor Lake uh, project, we own 75% of it. Our partner, uh, Waratah Capital Advisors, it used to be Lithium Royalty Corp. Um, they're our 25% partner. So we're advancing that together. And the ore from there will go up to the True North Mill to be processed into spodumene concentrate. Do you guys have 100% ownership over the mill? So the mill most likely will be a 75-25 JV with Waratah. We, what we're doing, so we have a lease of that mill uh, for seven years to process, uh, to process spodumene concentrate. And, you know, that, that hasn't been fully decided on exactly how we'll, we'll structure that to fund the CapEx, but it could be 100% grid or it could be the 75-25 JV we have at Donner. What cost, uh, I'm sure right now you guys have ran some models on how much it's going to cost per ton to get to a spodumene concentrate. Do you, have you guys published any costs or uh, spoken about that uh, in any of your materials? Yeah. So in our the press release we put out on the scoping study for the mill, the initial CapEx to reconfigure it would be 50 million Canadian, 5-0. And that's, that includes a 30% contingency. So you know, for seventy five thousand tons of output, that that capital intensity is you're not going to find that in Canada. It's best in class, and it is because there's a lot of infrastructure in the area that we can leverage. There's probably two hundred million dollars of infrastructure value at True North. So, you know, that's the initial capex. We have there are there is an operating cost in the P in the the scoping study as well. But you know, with our PA that's coming out, we will have a fully integrated cost of the mining plus the processing and. As I mentioned, we hope to have that done by the end of this quarter. Right now, you guys just raised $5 million in funds. What's what's the plan with that $5 million? Uh, where, where's that going towards? Yeah, no, good question. So, you know, that was flow through dollars. So we have to spend it on the ground, say drilling, some sort of, any sort of groundwork. And, and the goal for us is to continue to advance our Donner Lake project. So we want to do some expansion drilling, some deeper holes to get a sense of uh, what we have at our two dikes. Uh, we think it goes deeper. We want to prove that to the markets. Uh, there's also the potential for some additional exploration drilling at Donner. And then we'll have to do a bit of infilling there as well, because we do need to upgrade our resource from inferred to indicated to keep on our timeline of 2025 production. We also have another lithium project called Falcon West. It's our more blue sky potential project. And there we'll be initiating our maiden drill program starting in a few weeks. So that hasn't been drilled by us. Uh, we we got you know we have the permits now to drill it, and we hope to have put together a maiden program which outlines you know what we what we maybe could have there. It's going to be there is a historical resource on the property. It, it's small. It's a quarter million tons at one point seven percent, but it's an indication that there's something there. So if we can put together you know, a vision of this thing is potentially a lot bigger than that. It could be, uh, it could be viable. It's right off the trans Canada. It's about an hour drive from Winnipeg. So super great infrastructure. Now we don't hear a lot about mining projects in Manitoba. Uh, when I think of lithium, I know that a lot of the names that have caught steam in Canada are in Quebec. And I've always thought a lot of that has to do with the super flow through and how you can get all this money back from the government, which makes the cost of drilling, it's a little bit cheaper or a lot cheaper. Um, what can you tell us about Manitoba as a mining jurisdiction and why it's attractive if you're an investor that wants to uh, take a take a shot at a company like Grid Metals Corp? Yeah, no. So the one thing most people don't know is, so there's two lithium producers in Canada right now. Siona is one of them in Quebec, North American Lithium Project. And the other one is the Tanko Mine, which is, 35 kilometers from our Donner Lake project. So Tanko has been producing 
um, lithium, cesium, tantalum since the 1960s. So it's it's been around forever, and it's a you know it's a world class pegmatite, a world class ore body. So you know one of the reasons you kind of want to be in the area is you do have an example of a, of an amazing project. And you know we 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 have something interesting at Donner Falcon Lake is the greenstone belt just south of the Tango greenstone belt. So you know we, we think there's a lot of prospectivity there. And the big thing, in my opinion, about Manitoba is the permitting regime and how quickly things can move. It's a very small province, obviously, versus, you know, Ontario and Quebec, uh, but you can move a lot faster. So the last mine that was permitted in Manitoba was called the Reed Mine, and they went from maiden resource to receipt of a mining permit in two and a half years. So, you know, that kind of timeline is, is super, super expedited versus some of the other provinces in Canada. And the reason the focus on Quebec is you have a lot more outcrop in Quebec. So, you know, it's that's the traditional way you find uh, these these spodumene bearing pegmatites is you, you find outcrop and you go from there. A lot of the stuff in Manitoba is undercover. There is some outcrop, but it just makes it a bit harder. But if you do have a bit of that and, you know, good geological team, you can find some some good discoveries. So is the way that a lot of these discoveries happening in Manitoba, then it's just historic drilling where they might've been drilling for something else and they just happen to come up with some lithium and that's kind of where a lot of these companies are getting started? Yeah. Or you find a small dike somewhere and someone noted in a 1960s assessment report that there was, you know, spodumene crystals or something like that. And then you follow up, but a lot of it is covered more so than Quebec and a bit more so than Ontario as well. So one of the big things that I think when many investors look at a junior mining company, especially in Canada, is the cap table. How much do the people pay for the shares? Who are the notable investors? Is there any convertible debt? What can you tell us about the cap table and what should investors know if they're making a realistic assessment of the company in terms of who owns what stock? I I, I know you can't specifically identify which names, but how much they paid for it and 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 why there's value at this valuation. Yeah, so we have a few big strategic shareholders, which was very important on our last financing. So we have two cornerstone investors in Waratah Capital Advisors. They have around 20%, just under 20% of our common, and AMCI, which is around 12%. That's a, a battery metal fund in Australia. So they've been very supportive shareholders and helped us get our last financing across the line. So, you know, they put in money at 10 cents on the back end of our charity flow, and they've been supportive along the way. So you know, in these kind of markets where it's, um, you know, equities are continue to go lower. Uh, if you don't have some bigger institutional shareholders or some cornerstone investors, it it can be hard to keep things advanced on uh, the timeline you want. But thankfully, we do have that. So we are, a, it's a 20 million market cap company. We have around 200 million shares outstanding. Stock's around 10 cents today. And no debt, um, you know, we're in good shape. We we just raised the $5 million of flow through, we still have some uh, hard dollars to continue to advance things. And, you know, I do think a PA, which we're going to put out this quarter is the goal, is, um, is going to be important because no one else is doing a reconfiguration of an existing, you know, processing circuit uh, to process lithium. Even though, you know, Primero Engineering, who did our scoping study at the mill, you know, they're one of, they're arguably one of the best uh, spot to be processing consultants out there. So we think this is very doable. It's just no one else is doing it. So actually getting numbers out to the market on a fully consolidated basis with the mining plus the processing is going to be important. Now, I, I have to ask, you're obviously seeing your former analyst, you're seeing lots of lithium deals and many of them are just sort of grassroots exploration lithium deals. Um, some of them, you know, they have properties in South America and some of the brine projects, but it feels to me like somebody who invests in junior mining stocks, like I, there's almost just so many lithium companies right now. Then we look at the price of lithium is down, I think 83% in 2023. How do you manage to go and make noise in such a crowded space and make investors go, this is, this is if not the one, it's it's one of the few that actually have a shot of getting to the finish line when, you know, there's at this point, there's got to be over 50 names in, in the junior markets in the lithium space. Yeah, no, there definitely with uh, the lithium boom, which started, I guess, you know, more in 2022 and 
yeah, like you said, last year, prices were down a lot. A lot of companies were converting to lithium plays. So I agree, it's a very saturated market. But yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of those names, it's very, very grassroots. It's say closeology plays. The differentiator for grid is we have a timeline path to production, which has been replicated at the Reed mine, you know, and that, that thing was running from 2014 to 2018. So it's, it's pretty recent precedent. And, you know, we have, we have very good backers, which can, which can help us execute this. So, so kind of piecing all that together and the, um, the shareholders who have faith in what we're doing, I think it's very important. And, and grid has been in Manitoba for close to 20 years. So, you know, the connections that grid has with the government and actually, you know, expeditiously advancing things is uh, it's very important, and it is a small province, like I mentioned. So you can you can be talking to the decision makers more so than in other provinces, which are a lot bigger. All right, last question for any investors watching or anybody who's thinking about jumping in: What does twenty twenty four look like in terms of timelines, milestones, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, no. So it's going to be a pretty catalyst rich 2024 for grid. So we expect to have drills turning in the next week or two. And we're going to have a pretty robust winter program. So we have, like I mentioned, the drilling at Donner Lake, you know, some infill, but also some expansion drilling, some exploration drilling, which could be interesting. And then our maiden drill program at Falk. And I'm, I'm excited about what, you know, to see what we have there. It's a, it could be very interesting if we can piece together a, you know, the, the sense of a, a deposit there. So you, we have that and then, you know, in the next few months in terms of assays coming back and then the PA this quarter is, uh, in my view, very important just to, to wrap economics because we don't, we aren't doing something that everyone else is doing. It's a bit unique. And I think investors will want to see that. But once we have those economics out, hopefully people will appreciate that there is some value in what we're doing here. And, you know, if the lithium price does start moving up or, lithium equities start getting a bit more love. I, I think, you know, looking to the value of valuation of grid versus our assets, uh, in my opinion, it's a, it's a very attractive opportunity. In the last financing, the one we just closed, you know, man, management put a, a purchase 1.7 million of the shares. So, you know, put in a good amount of money and we, we do believe in what we're doing and we want to execute and continue to advance this thing. Well, Brandon, thanks so much for hopping on here. I think that you guys got an exciting story. It's uh, nice to see a company that's thinking differently about it rather than let's just go and drill a property and spend a ton of money promoting it and hope for the best. I feel like you guys have a plan for investors who want to see a, a, a realistic timeline and a, a shot at a company getting to cash flow. It's it's certainly uh, exciting to see somebody take a shot like this. So I, I, I wish you guys the best of luck and uh, thank you for hopping on here today. Yeah, I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks for having me. It was great. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks everyone.